Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here. If you are coming to us from our implicit differentiation video, doing first implicit derivatives, we gave you this outline at the end that said we differentiate from left to right, we combine all our dy dx terms on one side or all our y prime terms on one side, move all the other terms over to the other side once we've done that, and then lastly we factor out dy dx or y prime and divide to get a solution. When we're finding implicit second derivatives after we've done all of this and found our dy dx or our y single prime, our first derivative, we'll need to do an additional step, which means we'll need to differentiate again and anywhere in our formula that we get dy dx or y prime, we'll have to plug in our answer that we got for the first derivative. Let's take a look at some examples here. If we have 3x squared plus 2y squared equal to 12 and we want to find the second derivative of y with respect to x, then what we'll need to do is first differentiate and get our first derivative. So derivative with respect to x of 3x squared plus 2y squared equal to 12. So our first term, derivative is a power rule, 2 comes out front, multiplies the 3, power goes down by 1, and we get 6x. Derivative of the second term, we get a power rule again, so the power comes out, multiplies the front, we get 4y. But now remember, when we take the derivative of something involving y, the chain rule gives us the derivative of y with respect to x. So a little bit different rule when we have y terms than x terms. Over here on the right, the derivative of 12 is going to be 0 because 12 is a constant. And now solving for our first derivative, this is not a dy dx term, so I'll move it over to the other side. So we would get 4y dy dx is equal to negative 6x. And then I would need to divide by 4y on both sides. So I would get dy dx is equal to negative 6x over 4y. And if we want to reduce that, then we would get negative 3x over 2y. So we have that for our first derivative, right? This says dy dx is equal to negative 3x over 2y. Now if I want to take the derivative again, differentiate with respect to x of what I just got, that will give me the second derivative, right? The derivative with respect to x of dy dx will give me the second derivative. You might also call it y double prime, right? So d squared y over dx squared here in this notation. Now, I need to differentiate this again, but now it's a quotient rule, right? So I have a function on top of, I'll put the negative with my top. So we'll say negative 3x is my f and 2y is my g, and I really have a quotient rule to do the second derivative here. So if I do low function g, times the derivative of the high function, the derivative of negative 3x is negative 3, minus the high function, negative 3x, times the derivative of the low function, the derivative of the low function is 2, but derivative of something with y in it gives me dy dx from the chain rule. So we have 2 dy dx as our derivative of 2y there, and then all of that over g squared, right? So that gives us 2y squared would give us 4y squared on the bottom. So additionally, you know, we could call this y double prime if you prefer to write it that way. So 2y times negative 3, we'd get negative 6y. Minus negative, I have 3x times 2, so I get plus 6x times dy dx, right? Now dy dx, I'm going to plug in what I got from my first derivative. I got negative 3x over 2y, right? So this dy dx is actually negative 3x over 2y. Okay, all of that now over our 4y squared. All right, let's give ourselves some room and we'll keep going. So y double prime here, we get negative 6y minus 18x squared over 2y when I multiply these together. All of that is over 4y squared. I have a fraction and a fraction. Let's get a common denominator and at least reduce that much. 
think of this over 1. I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by 2y to get it to match this denominator. So I'll get negative 12y squared over 2y. We'll keep our minus 18x squared over 2y. And all of that is over the 4y squared that we still have down below. Let's give ourselves double room here. Okay, so now putting these together on the top, I'll get negative 12y squared minus 18x squared, all of that over 2y, and then all of that over 4y squared. Now that we have a common denominator on the top, we can think of divide by 4y squared as multiply by the reciprocal 1 over 4y squared, if we like. And so you can see what we get here. I'll write it over here. I get y double prime is equal to negative 12y squared minus 18x squared over 2 times 4 and y times y squared. I get 8y cubed on the bottom. And what you might do is just look and see everything is reducible by 2. So we might go ahead and say that y double prime is equal to negative 6y squared minus 9x squared all over 4y cubed. Let's look at one more example here. We've got x plus y is equal to sine y, and we want to find the second derivative. So x plus y equals sine y. We'll go ahead and say the first derivative, derivative with respect to x, of x plus y equals sine y. These aren't so bad, right? All of these derivatives are pretty easy. So derivative of x would just be 1. And then derivative of y would be 1 also. But because it's a y term, we really need to multiply by dy dx from the chain rule. Equal to the derivative with respect to x of sine y, we would get cosine y. But now since this is a y term, we would also get times dy dx. Okay, so for here I'll need to get my dy dx terms on the same side and get my not dy dx term on the other side. So I have dy dx from this term. And then moving this term over that would make it minus cosine y dy dx is equal to, if I move this term over to the other side, subtracting 1 on both sides, I'd get negative 1. Now remember we can factor out dy dx. And so if I factor that out, I would get 1 left over in the first term. I'd get minus cosine y left over in the second term. And then here I would have negative 1 still. Dividing by what's in parentheses, I would then get that dy dx is equal to negative 1 over 1 minus cosine of y. Okay, so that's our first derivative. So we'll say y prime is equal to negative 1 over 1 minus cosine y. Let's go ahead and use the prime notation moving forward. So now if I want to take the derivative with respect to x again of all of this, so derivative with respect to x of y prime is going to be y double prime. And then we'll have a quotient rule, right? So I'll have negative 1 being my f, and 1 minus cosine y being my g. And I will go ahead and actually I just scoot my negative up here a little bit so you know that and you can remember that I'm using the negative with my f instead of my g. So we have a quotient rule, low d high minus high d low. So low function, 1 minus cosine y. Derivative of the high function, derivative of negative 1 is 0 because that's a constant. Minus the high function, which is negative 1 times the derivative of the low function. So derivative of 1 minus cosine y. Derivative of 1 is 0. Derivative of negative cosine y. Derivative of negative cosine of something is actually sine of that thing. So we get sine of y. But now this is a y term in here, so we actually need times the derivative of the inside, which is y prime. All right, so that's our top there, and then the bottom we need over the low function squared, so we'll have 1 minus cosine y all squared here. Okay, let's go ahead and say what we have a little bit more simply. 
So we've got zero times all of this makes this zero. Minus negative one would make just one here. So we really get sine of y times y prime over the quantity one minus cosine of y all squared. And so now notice what I'll need to do is take my y prime that I got originally and I'll need to plug it in there where I have a y prime now. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll say y double prime is equal to sine of y times negative one over one minus cosine y all over one minus cosine y all squared. Okay, let's go ahead and multiply that in. So what we really end up with is we have negative sine of y over one minus cosine y. So that's just the top here, right? That's that. And then all of that is over the quantity one minus cosine y all squared. If I have a fraction in a fraction, let's go ahead and bump this up and multiply by the reciprocal. So think about one over one minus cosine y all squared, you can kind of see what's going to happen, right? I get another copy of one minus cosine y. So really my answer for the second derivative, we get negative sine y on top, but on the bottom we get one minus cosine of y all cubed. Okay, so that is our second derivative for this one. All right, hopefully this helps you with your second implicit derivatives, everybody. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.